So do you struggle with consistently producing content for your blog? Do you often wonder, Jonathan, how do you keep going when you feel like there's no engagement? I have a tiny list. I'm posting every once in a while, not getting very many comments. How do you keep going and how do you create consistency in your blogging? That's what today's episode is all about. Hey, messengers, welcome to the Market Your Message show. I'm your host, Jonathan Milligan, and author of the book, Your Message Matters, How to Rise Above the Noise and Get Paid for What You Know. And I'm excited to come to you today with a very important topic. This is a question that I hear a lot, and it's around this idea of consistency. So how do you build that discipline of being consistent, especially when you're just getting started? In fact, uh, one reader wrote in to me, and this is exactly what she said. Staying consistent when it feels like nothing is happening. That is my biggest struggle. My list is tiny, my engagement is low, and it can be a bit disheartening despite feeling like this is what God is calling me to do. And there's nothing more discouraging than that, right? It's like you feel like things, the momentum's not there, but yet you're trying to be consistent and you're trying to figure this whole thing out. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to help you by giving you what I consider to be my three power tips. In fact, here's what you're going to discover in this episode, why most bloggers focus on the wrong thing. We're going to talk about why picking a single day of the week makes all the difference and what farming has to do with blogging and much, much more. By the way, if you're just starting out and you're like, Jonathan, I'm not sure where to start. I'm still trying to figure out who my audience is. What is my niche? What is my message? If that's you, I want to encourage you to go grab our nine page blueprint. This has been downloaded thousands of times. It's, it's helped thousands of people discover their purpose, their people and their passion. It's called the discover your message blueprint, and you can actually download it for free. Just go to marketyourmessage.com slash discover. All right. So what do you do when you're wanting to build consistency, but you lack the discipline and you're just not sure if, if you're doing things right? What if you say, I'm not a very good writer, or I just don't know how to come up with ideas, or I'm just not doing it on a consistent basis? Well, the first thing that I want to let you know before we get into these three power tips is three simple words. Consistency births momentum. Consistency births momentum. You could also say it this way. Consistency is the mother of momentum. Now, what does that mean? That means that it, if you desire momentum, and don't we all? Don't, isn't that what we want? We want to see some momentum. It starts, its mother is consistency. You can't have momentum without consistency. It doesn't work that way. In fact, I would venture to say every single person you admire, any kind of thought leader or influencer, if you trace their story back, they at one point decided to go all in with consistency. That was even before they even got noticed. Uh, I often said, and I said in my book, that we often start in obscurity. That's kind of how it goes. You, you launch the podcast and you don't have very many listeners. You launch the blog and no one's responding. But how do you get the momentum you want? It starts by being consistent. You have to learn to be consistent. And so how do we do that? What are three powerful tips that I could apply to my business, Jonathan, to help me to move forward? Well, here they are. Tip number one is to focus on maximizing learning. See, in the very, very beginning, before you ever have momentum, 
you can't just focus on feedback because feedback's not always there. You can't just focus on number of downloads on the podcast. You can't just focus on number of blog comments. So what do you focus on? You focus on maximizing learning. In fact, I talked a little bit about this in my book, Your Message Matters. And I want to read a little bit from the book today because I think uh, this will be an encouragement to you. So here's uh, what I talk about. This is on page 157 in the book. And I talk about uh, this concept. And here's what I say. Another way to say it is we launch, then we learn. So you don't become a successful writer, then start a blog. Rather, you become a great writer while blogging. Let me say it again, because this is so key, okay? It's so important for you to get this. You don't become a successful writer, then start a blog. Rather, you become a great writer while blogging. You don't become a successful podcaster, then start a podcast. You don't wait to become great in front of the camera before starting to record videos. The goal of any endeavor should be to either maximize revenue or maximize learning. Anytime you start something new, decide to start with maximizing learning. And this can only be done by launching. You launch, then you learn. That's how it goes. And so I want you to get this first power tip that your focus should be on learning. Learning, okay, now that I've published a blog post, the next time I'm going to divide up my paragraphs so they're not so big and long. The next time I'm going to try adding a link to my blog post. The next time I'm going to try to add a few more images to my blog post. You're learning and building upon your learning. And when you don't produce the content first, you're robbing yourself of learning. In fact, you can go back to my first few blog posts. They're out there online. They're not very good at all. They're terrible. I like to think I've gotten a little bit better. Same with my podcast. Go back to my first podcast. It's terrible. Go back to my first YouTube video. It's creepy. And so that is my encouragement is that we don't just start by being great writers, by being great podcasters, by being great on video. You launch, then you learn. Focus right now on maximizing learning. That's your focus. And know that when you're not being consistent, you're robbing yourself for the opportunity to learn, to get better. That's how it starts. Let's go to tip number two. Measure your actions, not your results. Now, this is also so key because what happens for most of us is we just want the results, right? We want them right now. I also talk about this in the book. And so if it's okay, I want to read another selection from the book. And by the way, if you don't have a copy, uh, I am giving away free copies. I've bought a couple thousand copies from my publisher to give out just to our community. And all I ask is that you cover the shipping and uh, there'll be a link below, uh, whether it's on the podcast or video or wherever you're consuming this, there's a link to that. And you can go, I'll, I'll send you one of these books. Happy to do it. So let me read some of this. This is on page 43 out of the book. I want results now. Have you ever said that? I know I have. We live in a world where people expect instant results. We want what we want immediately. We simply put too much pressure on ourselves to see results now. And see, that's what happens sometimes with blogging is we publish the blog post and we're like, I didn't get any comments. So therefore, I'm not a good writer. I can't do this. And we head down that downward spiral. And that's not fair to ourselves because we need to know this is just the process of learning and getting discovered. One of the biggest myths in business is the idea of overnight success. Wherever there's a story of seemingly instant breakthrough, there's also an untold story of years of preparation. We see a person's sudden onstage appearance and think, well, they just got lucky. The stars aligned. They knew someone. They were in the right place at the right time. While sometimes that can be true, 
there's also another truth that cannot be denied. They were just preparing backstage for a long time. I also use the example of the Japanese bamboo tree. Have you heard this story? After the seed of a Japanese bamboo tree is planted, it can be watered and nurtured for years without showing any outward sign of growth. But after five years, something amazing happens. After five years, the bamboo tree grows nearly 90 feet in just six weeks. But the real question to consider is this. Did the bamboo tree grow in six weeks or five years? You cannot always measure everything with results. If you're going to display present courage, you must settle in for the journey ahead. For now, measure your actions, not your results. There will come a time when you can measure your results. But without consistent action before that, your seed will die. And that's the point that I want you to get is that you have to understand the difference between measuring results and measuring your actions. You see, our results, we can't control. It's out of our control. You can't make somebody comment on your blog post. You can't make somebody, um, you know, share your blog post, share it all over social media. Those things are outside of your control. What you can control are your actions, showing up and publishing every single week because you're passionate about your topic. And you're like, if this only helps one person six months from now, I'm going to create this piece. If it's a blog post, a podcast, a YouTube video, if the message is worth sharing, you need to share it, friend, right? That's the goal of what we're talking about. And that leads me to tip number three. And I talk about this uh, a lot, but um, I want to reiterate it right now. This is a practical tip. Pick a day of the week and dominate. Pick a day of the week and dominate. Now, Here's what I want you to think about. And I first realized and learned this concept from James Clear. Some of you know of him. Uh, he's written a best-selling book called Atomic Habits. But I actually got to meet James like a good seven, eight years ago before he was even really as known as he is today. We met at a writer's conference, and I was just talking to him. I told him I was blogging, and he was blogging on habits at the time. And he was sharing with me, like we were talking about, well, We're sharing like best practices, secrets, and this is what he told me. He said, Jonathan, every week on Wednesdays, I think Wednesday was his day, he said, that's the day I'm publishing my next piece. And he would write, and if you've looked at his blog before, he writes these super long blog posts on habits and habit formation. And he's like, sometimes it was... Tuesday night, 1130 at night, I am tired, but I made a commitment to myself that every Wednesday I'm showing up no matter what. And so really what he decided was I'm picking a day of the week and I'm dominating that day of the week. And that example can be spread out to so many other thought leaders. That's what they do. They pick a day of the week or a couple days a week, and they keep showing up to their audience. And that consistency builds trust. The trust creates value and attention. All those things work together. And so I hope that you'll understand that consistency is the mother of everything you're looking for. Consistency is the mother of momentum. It is the mother of building trust. It's the mother of building value. All of those things come when we decide to be consistent. So I want to end with an analogy that I've used a couple times on here, and I wrote in my book, and I talk about farming. And you might be like, Jonathan, what's farming have to do with blogging or podcasting? Well, a lot. Because what I challenged the reader to do in my book, page 44, is I said, become a farmer. Like literally develop a farmer's mentality with this whole thing. And this will help you and give you permission. If you catch this one concept today, it's going to unleash a whole nev- another level of productivity and 
um, producing of content that you've never seen before. Okay. Listen to this. Farmers don't focus on results. They focus on action. Sure. The ultimate goal of a farmer is a bountiful harvest. They know many days of action eventually lead to results. Imagine a farmer who spends an entire day planting in his seed in his field. The next day he wakes up and hurries to the window, hoping to see a knee-high crop. But when he sees nothing, he exclaims, See, I knew this wasn't going to work. Now, as absurd as that sounds, we do the same thing every day. We take a little bit of action, hoping for an immediate result. When we don't see the results, we convince ourselves of all the reasons why our efforts will never work. But most people plant in the spring only to give up before the harvest in the fall. Don't let that be said of you. Become a farmer. Give yourself permission to measure your actions, not your results for a season. And that's what I want to leave you with. If you don't remember anything else from this episode, I want you to develop the mentality of a farmer. What's the worst that can happen? What's the downside? That you create a body of work that you could repurpose in some way? Maybe you repurpose all that blog content into a book because you've just been consistently showing up. Maybe you repurpose it into a podcast that explodes in growth and you've got plenty of content. There is no downside to letting your creativity shine. I promise you that. Well, that's it for this episode. And did you enjoy this? If so, I want you to like, share, or subscribe. And also let us know what topics you would like for me to cover in future episodes. And always, never, ever forget that your message matters.